I recently posted a video showing how to use cheap devices to watch TV on any old CRT. In that video, I mentioned I couldn't find any HDMI to component or RGB SCART converters, but an awesome viewer pointed out this one. I think I may have actually stumbled across it before, but since the listing said upscaling, I just skipped it, thinking it wouldn't downscale properly. Well, I was wrong, and this thing is actually pretty cool. Now, it still is locked at 480i, which means you can't use it as a cheap 240p converter, but I still think it's worth talking about, so let's take a look. Well, let's start this out by just doing a quick overview. This HDMI to component video converter can accept signals up to 1080p60 via HDMI 1.3 and output multiple different resolutions. It comes with a USB power cable and the device can be powered by any USB charger or PC USB port. It also comes with an HDMI cable. The unit itself has the component video and audio RCA cables hardwired into it. On one side is the power LED, USB power jack, and resolution switching button. And the HDMI input is on the end of the unit. There's also a manual that details its scaling functionality. It can scale resolutions up to 1080p and downscale them down to 480i in both PAL and NTSC formats. I'm not really sure why you'd need a device that upscales HDMI to component video though, and the focus of my testing is all in its downscaling functionality. Before I connect it, I need to warn you that the default output is 720p60, and there's no way to tell what the output resolution is without having it connected to a display. So if you're using this to send 480i to a nice PVM or something, or I guess even 480p to an HDCRT or older projector, I strongly recommend connecting it to any flat panel display or scaler with component video inputs first, set it to the target resolution, and then connect it to your CRT. I'm showing it on my PVM here, but this definitely isn't good for the display. The good news is this device saves the last selected resolution even after power cycling, so you just need to set it once and then never touch the resolution button again. I lag tested this adapter and the results were very surprising. It only adds a single rolling frame of lag to 1080p and 720p, so the lowest lag would be zero and the highest would be 16 milliseconds. On a CRT, that's probably not noticeable at all, even to pro gamers. When receiving 480p, the lag was pretty steady at 6 milliseconds, or less than half a frame. If you send it 480i, it has about a frame and a half of lag, but there's really no reason to send something like this 480i. And it does accept 240p, but it outputs the signal as 480i, making that completely pointless. So there's no way you could use this to get like 240p out of a mister or something like that. It would always be 480i. While I didn't do any crazy deep dive testing, I did want to at least show you what to expect for output quality, and I wanted to compare it to the next best solution I found. The sharpness is definitely better than the next best converter I've tried, which outputted S-Video. This component video converter is a bit brighter though, and I'm not sure if it's expecting a different IRE or if the circuit here is just a bit brighter than the other one. If you've already bought that 10 DAC converter, there's certainly no need to upgrade, but it is a better device overall. Personally, I'd base my decision on your total setup. Is it easier to route component video through your existing setup or S-Video? If it's about the same, then make your decision based on overall features. Do you want something that outputs PAL and NTSC over S-Video and Composite? Or would you prefer YPBPR in only its source region that's a bit brighter, but also with multiple resolutions to choose from? I think at these prices, you really can't go wrong with either. The HDMI input does support streaming boxes without the need for a splitter, but just like all other inexpensive downscalers, there's no aspect ratio control. That means old 4x3 TV shows on streaming services will still have the black bars on the sides, and 16x9 content will all be smooshed into the more narrow aspect ratio. I know I already went over this in the last video, but instead of using a streaming box, you could just use any PC and simply load your streaming service in a browser window and drag it over. I normally don't like to repeat myself in multiple videos, but this will literally take about a minute, so let me just show this process again really quick. 
First, connect the converter to the HDMI output of your computer. Then, right-click on your desktop and hit Display Settings. Scroll down and click on Advanced Display, then make sure the adapter is selected from the drop-down menu. Click on Display Adapter Properties for that device, then click List All Modes. Now, look for a mode that's a 4x3 aspect ratio. Any of the ones I have listed on screen will work. After selecting, hit Apply and make sure the Active Signal Mode matches the Desktop Mode in the Advanced Display window. If not, hit List All Modes again and keep trying 4x3 resolutions until one matches. This will be different on every PC, graphics card, etc. Once you find a mode that matches, open a browser, log into a streaming service, and start a TV show. Then drag the browser to the CRT and hit F11 to make it full screen. And that's it. Older 4x3 TV shows should fill the CRT properly, and modern 16x9 shows should be properly centered with black bars on the top and bottom, exactly as they should. Same with PC games. As long as you're able to output a 4x3 resolution, those should look right, and remember, there's no LCD motion blur with CRTs, so you probably won't notice any lag at all. Just remember that unless you can set your modern console to a 4x3 resolution, it'll have the same aspect ratio problem as TV and movies. But if you're using a PC, it should look just right. So there you have it. Now there's an option for a cheap HDMI to component video converter. At under 40 bucks, I would call this a must have for anybody looking to downscale their HDMI sources to 480i for use on CRTs. And while it's absolutely nowhere near as good of a solution as something like an OSSC Pro or RetroTing product, I think at this price point, it's either the best way to get started out downscaling to component video or just another great tool to have in your toolbox. Please make sure to check out the original video for other solutions that go to composite, S-video, and both wired coax and wireless RF. I'll probably do one more video on wireless RF, but you'll definitely want to watch that other one first. I've also got individual overviews on my Amazon page if you'd like a refresher on any single one of these devices. Oh, and don't forget to subscribe to Marco's channel as well, since my recent downscaling videos have been focusing on cheap 480i devices. Marco shows all the high quality 240p downscalers, and if this is something you're serious about, definitely give his videos and the downscaling section of RetroRGB a look. Anyway, this video isn't sponsored in any way, and I paid for all of these myself. I'll post affiliate links in the description for everything I bought at no additional cost to you, and I hope if you buy these, you'll take the time to click through those links, or just clicking on the general Amazon affiliate link on the website support page to help out. If you appreciate the research I do and want to support further, monthly support services like Floatplane and Patreon are what truly keeps this channel going, and I can't thank those supporters enough. Lastly, if you'd like to advertise to everyone around you that you're a fellow nerd, pick up some retro RGB merch. There's t-shirts, hoodies, stickers, and a bunch more fun stuff. Anyway, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.